stand, we're going to praise Jesus. Here we go.
up your name. We lift up your name. You know, one thing you can't tell by looking at me right now is in my eyes, I've got contact lenses. If I didn't have them, then when I look out right now, I would have no clarity. All I would see was a haze of people, but no definition. I just can't rely I just can't rely on my own sight. And when we read our Bible, it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it says that as Christians, we're not to live by sight, but we're to live by faith. Let's not rely on our own sight, but let's rely on faith. That's what the Bible says. So in all circumstances, in all situations, what God's saying is, come on, don't rely on your sight, but rely on the faith that I have given you. In good times, in bad times, and in different times, when we're rich, when we're poor, when we're healthy, when we're not so well, we walk by faith, not by sight. That's what God has called us to live. And You know, if we think about the Bible, we think about that incredible story that most people understand whether in church or out of church, that whether we've got a Christian background or not, is where David faces Goliath and he walks up in that situation. And if he was to rely by sight, he would have never taken on the giant. Because every other Israelite was like, there's no way. But one young man stands forward and said, no, 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 no. Like me and you, no, 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 I'm not called to live by sight but I'm called to live by faith and this giant he's defiled the armies of the living God he chose not to live by sight but to live by faith when the spies were sent to spy out the land a bunch of spies said no 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 there's no way that we can take this land but two men with a different spirit the Bible said Caleb Joshua They looked at the land and went, hmm, we're not meant to live by sight. We're meant to live by faith. We shall surely, we shall surely succeed. And Moses leading the children of Israel out of captivity. 
arrives at the sea. No way forwards. It is impossible. This is over. But a spirit of faith rose up that I want to call out of you this morning, Legacy Church. A spirit of faith that says, hey, where there is no way, God makes a way. Why? We're not called to walk by sight, but we're called to live by faith. And Moses stretched out his hand and God parted the sea and on they went. Come on, church. Let a spirit of faith rise up in this place this morning. Come on, you're called to live by faith and not by sight in all situations, in all circumstances. Come on. Come on, let's lift up his name. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Call out faith. faith this morning come on in your situations where you need to stop relying on your own sight you need to trust in God I'm going to pray across this place right now if you know that God's talking to you the stuff in your life where you need to step out stop relying on your own feelings your own decisions but trust in him Come on, you just lift your hands right now and I'm going to pray for you. And there's hands right across this room right now. Come on, if that's you, lift your hands. God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that we can rely not on ourselves, but we can rely on you. We trust in you. We put our faith in you. Put all our assurance, all our worth, all our feelings everything in you. You are 100% reliable, 100% stable. We can 100% rely on you. We give it to you right now. All our stuff, all our circumstances, all our situations, the things that we face, we give them to you. You are God Almighty. You are not just King, you are King of Kings. You are not just Lord, you are Lord of Lords. You are not just peace, you are Prince of Peace. It's who you are. We thank you for who you are and all that you do in our lives. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's people said, amen, amen. Come on, let's give it up for Jesus in this place this morning. How awesome. Fantastic. Well, I want to give you a huge welcome to Legacy Church this morning. It really is really is great to see you at our 11.30 service. And if you're new in church, maybe it's your first or second time, we want to give you an extra special welcome this morning. It truly is. Truly is great to see you. We're so grateful that you've chosen to be here with us uh, this morning. We'd love to hang out with you after the service. We'd love to get to know you a little bit more, find out where you've come from. And so outside the doors there, to the left, there's a great seated area called the Connections Lounge. And we'd love just to hang out with you, uh, grab you a coffee, grab you a drink, and just find out more about you. Is that cool? All right, you can grab your seats, maybe say hi to somebody uh, on your way down, tell them they're looking good, give them a high five. Awesome. Okay, if you can take a look at the screens, we've got something we want to show you and promote to you this morning, so take a look. I will provide for those who grieve in Zion and bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. The oil of joy instead of mourning. And a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness. A planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. and 22nd of June, coming to Luminous. <laughs> Amazing. If you are interested, please do head to our Connections Lounge uh, and the team there will help you sign up. Um, a little bit later on in the service, we are going to be welcoming up Pastor Dell to come and speak to us this morning. She has got an incredibly powerful message that is just burning on, our, on her heart to share with us. Uh, so we're going to lean in, we're going to glean everything that God has got for us this morning. Uh, but just before that, um, I've got the privilege to uh, lead us in our giving moment this morning. Uh, the ways to give are on the screen behind me. Um, and I was inspired by uh, something that happened just a couple of days ago. You see, we're currently trying to teach our six-year-old son to ride a bicycle. And so I took him out on Friday and I did what I knew only to do because this is what my dad had done for me. So this is what I did for my child. So correct me if I'm wrong afterwards, but I held on to his saddle and kind of, you know, jogged alongside him, telling him how well he was doing. And then when I thought that he'd got to the point where he was steady, I let go but still kind of kept this, you know, this like, I'm still here, I'm still here. Things were going well for the first kind of 10, 15 seconds. And then the wobble, the panic, and then the mounting of the grass verge, him falling over, bike falling on top of him. And he was so upset. And, and in that moment, I thought that I could help by saying, but you were doing it on your own. You were doing so well. I wasn't even holding on, thinking that that would encourage him. Oh, no, no. He was mortified that I'd let him down, that I'd let go. And he looked at me and said, so you weren't even holding on, but 
I trusted you. And in that moment, it, it brought this whole idea of trust to light. You see, there's all sorts of levels of trust that we have in various relationships in our lives. Obviously, one of the powerful ones is the child to the parent. And um, there's our trust levels with our friends, with our colleagues, with our other family members. And it brought me to a verse in the Bible. It's a well-known verse in Proverbs 3, verse 5, which says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. The Lord knows that we can trust him 100% because he is 100% reliable. You see, I let people down. I let my son down, but God will never, ever let us down. He will never fail as we've already sung this morning. And it's interesting that this level of trust that he desires from us is 100%. It says, trust me with all your heart, not just with 80%. Not with 99, but he actually commands and demands 100% of our trust. And when you read the Gospels and you see Jesus interacting with people, he's always calling us to be all in. He always calls more out of us because he knows that that level of trust needs to be 100%. And he talks a lot about our finances. Jesus, when he was on earth, talked a lot about the things that we hold close, the things that we hold dear, because he knew that they were personal and that our attitude to those things was a reflection on how much we trusted in him. So this morning, I'm going to ask you to stand with me. And we're just going to think on this thought of our trust where are our trust levels this morning? Are we all in? Do we trust God with our family, with our finances, with everything we have? So God, we thank you this morning that we are able to trust you 100%. You will never let us down. You will never let us go. You will never fail us. And so God, this morning, stir our hearts, stir our faith to believe that we can go all in. Lord, that we can give more of ourselves, more of our finances. Lord, because we trust in you, we put our trust in you this morning, in your name. Amen. Amen. Let's praise together.
this moment. Father, we just ask that you lead us, you guide us, you speak to us. That you give us ears to hear what you are saying specifically to our hearts. Lord, we do not take this lightly, Lord. Your word is precious. Your word is wholesome. Your word is truth. Help us to grasp a hold of what you were saying to us this morning. In your precious name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, good. Good still morning, isn't it? Afternoonish morningish. Well, hi everybody. Hi everybody online. How are you? Hope you're good. I'm assuming you're answering the television. <laughs> okay. Well, we've been doing, um, we've got the theme of the year, which is wisdom, but um, each month we have different themes to do with wisdom, and this month it is wisdom in belonging. And um, I'm going to get straight into it because I've got some very important things to get through this morning, and I just, everything, this word has been weighted on me in such a way that I've never, ever had, I don't think, before um, in, in this sense. But I'm going to start reading it. So we've got, if you open your, your Bibles or your phones to Psalm 1, 1 to 3, and it says this. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person, that person who is blessed is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do, prospers. Whatever they do, prospers. So when we are blessed and we do not walk, stand or sit in these places, we're going to prosper. Whatever we do prospers. Where you prosper in your personal life, you prosper in your marriage, you prosper with your family, you prosper in your business or your work life, you prosper in your spiritual life, and you prosper in your church life. It isn't to say, I'm not saying that we don't face trials and tribulations and we don't go through storms, which we will do. But the thing is, we will get to the other side. And when we get to the other side, we will have greater revelation, greater insight in who God is, a greater trust for God for the future because he's brought you look back and think, wow, God, look what you have done because you're blessed. You're blessed in your going and you're blessed in your coming. So the theme for this month is wisdom in belonging. And the passage that I just read is all about belonging in the right way. Because you know you can belong to something, but it's not necessarily belonging in the right way. And I have four questions that I want us to think on, contemplate, and it, it's going to take, not just this morning, I, I really want to encourage us to just think on these things this week. You know, the four questions are, going back to the verse, number two, verse two, the, the, um, Psalm one, are you like a tree planted by streams of water? Do you yield fruit in season? Does your leaf not wither? And does whatever you do prosper? You see, this passage is all, it begins with the word blessed. Blessed are, it says. And blessed in the dictionary means endowed with divine favor. And in the Hebrew, it means that a blessed person does not do the things, in verse 2, which I read, they discern the right thing to do. We need discernment in this day and age. We need discernment like never before. Because we can be easily distracted. You know, and that's why I feel this word is so, so timely. The world is in a state. Wherever you look, whatever's going on, no one knows what they're doing anymore. 
No one knows. You've only got to look at the TV. They make one decision, then they change and do another. No, everybody's double-minded. This one way or this way. This is why it's so, so important that we get this word into our hearts this morning. So, you know, when all these things, blessed is the person that does not walk with, stand with, or sit with. There is a path that they will not walk on. There is a path, a road that they will not stand in. And there is a seat they will not sit in. Are you blessed this morning? Because take a look, assess your life. A blessed person will not walk, stand, or sit in these places. It means that a blessed person is very different from someone who's not blessed. Because it means they're different in how they think, how they behave, and to whom they choose to belong to. Who do you belong to this morning? Seriously, ask yourself. I've had to ask myself this question. Who do I really, really belong to? Look at the fruit of your life and see who you really belong to. Blessed, the, the blessed person is discerning enough that if they spend time in the wrong environment, they will know that they will be tainted. Do you know and understand the environments that you stand in? Now, granted, you're in places that you can't get away from in different in the work scenario and all that. But I'm not talking about literally you go walking and you're. I'm talking as a different walk. Yeah. I'm on about you linking arms and you walk in, and you stand in chatting and you're in it and you're all this and and then and you're sitting with them. That's what I mean. In your heart, not physically on the outside. In your heart, where are you? You see, our environment is extremely important for our growth and our journey in the kingdom of God. Listen to what it says in Matthew 7. Don't look for shortcuts to God. The market is flooded with sure fire, easygoing formulas for, such a success, for a successful life that can be practiced in your spare time. Don't fall for that stuff, even though crowds of people do. The way to life, to God, is vigorous and it requires our total attention. Are you distracted this morning? God is saying, come on, pay attention to me, pay attention to me. Don't get distracted this way, don't get distracted that way. Look this way, look up to me. And you see in Genesis, um, God created a beautiful garden. He created the garden, he created the birds, and you can read it in Genesis, the birds, the sea, the fish, the bird, all that. But then he created humanity. And where did he place humanity? In a garden. Yeah. And now I want us to fast forward right to 14th of April, 2024 in Doncaster Legacy Church. The garden. You see, after the resurrection, after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Peter, the disciple, preached a whopper of a sermon. His first ever sermon. And 3,000 got saved. And it talks of families, so that's even more than 3,000. It got saved. A church of thousands. And because then, that's when the church of Jesus Christ was birthed. In that moment, the church of Jesus Christ was birthed. And we are here today in Legacy Doncaster because of that sermon, because of the resurrection, because of the power of the Holy Spirit. And you see, the garden I'm talking about today is the church. And legacy, for us, this means legacy church. And I just want to read, and I, I, I have apologized for using this scripture over and over, but I'm not really apologizing. Because it's something that I hold dear to. It's something I've lived my life on. It's something we raised our family on. And this is what it says in Psalm 92. The uncompromisingly righteous shall flourish like the palm tree, be long-lived, stately, upright, useful, and fruitful. They shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon, majestic, stable, durable, and corruptible. Planted in the house of the Lord, they shall flourish in the courts of our God, growing in grace. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. 
I'm getting older, guys. I still want to bear fruit, not babies, obviously. <laughs> they shall be full of sap, of spiritual vitality, and rich in the verdure of trust, love, and contentment. They are living memorials to show that the Lord is upright and faithful to his promises. I love this verse. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Rachel, can you just show the picture for me? Oh, she's quick, Rachel. You're very quick. This is, I've got this in my study. And um, it's this, this, the verse I've just read. Living memorials declare that the Lord is upright and faithful to his promises. There is Lindy Lou, Linda Greendale. There is um, Kathy. There's Harold. <laughs> and there's Brenda Taylor. And there's Christine Norris just raising her hands, praising Jesus. Living memorials in the house of Legacy Church. I want to be like them when I grow up. The thing is, we have to understand this scripture. Read it. It's in the Amplified Version. Read it. Soak it in. Just understand it. You see, 20, no, 37 years ago, I gave my life to Jesus 37 years ago. This coming July is my 37th birthday. And in December this year, it'll be Grace's 38th birthday when he gave his life to Jesus. And we met in a church and we, and I met Gray the day I actually got saved. My, he took me to the prayer meeting the night after. He's a fast worker, let me tell you. <laughs> anyway, the prayer meeting was our first day. But the crazy thing is, that is so not the world that I got saved from. But God changed me in an instant. Changed Gray in an instant. And our first day was in a prayer meeting. And we, we, we obviously, time went on, we fell in love with each other and we got married. But the one thing that we would never ever compromise on, that we would give our lives fully to God. We devoted ourselves to each other, but to God first. We made a covenant. We used to pray in the car together in our dating days. We'd pray. We'd read the Bible together. We were locked and loaded to do whatever God had called us to. And the thing was, the one thing we wouldn't compromise on as well, not only serving God, but the things of God, which would be one is the church of Jesus Christ. We knew that we had to be planted in the church of Jesus Christ. And we, we've lived our life on that. We are passionate about that. Our kids, when we had kids, we, we made sure that they loved the church. We grew, we, they, they grew up in a place we never heard us talk about anybody because you know people are people, aren't they? We get on and we mix them, but they never heard. Why? Because we wanted them to love the church of God. And when they were older, can understand that people are people and we need to work together and get on together. Do you understand what I mean? And it's so, so important that we get this, guys, in our families, in our homes, but not only just with your kids, with husband and wife, You've got to stand together. You've got to stand together. And when one is weak, the other has to lift the other one up. You see, don't allow each other to walk down the road that you're not supposed to walk on. With Gray and I, we've always, whenever I start walking somewhere, Gray will come and start taking me around and start putting me on the right pathway. Whenever I would stand somewhere, he would say, don't stand there, come this way. And we'd stand somewhere different. Don't sit there. And vice versa. We have to look out for each other. We've got to look out for each other. And that's what the church is. Planted in the house, we will flourish. Why? Because we're looking out for each other. We're a family. We are God's family. So it's not just about our, our earthly family, our close family. This is our family. I've got people in this church that have looked out for, for me for 22 years. 22 years, Della and Harold, Angela and Graham, being rock solid by the side of me, me and Gray, and championing us, being there for us, maybe slapped us a few times, maybe we've had to slap them a few times, but we're still together. We're still together, planted in the house, building the house for Jesus. You see, when you're planted, <clears throat> uh, oh, when I look back, we go back to Wales, obviously, now and um, quite regularly. But there are people that when Gray and I first got saved, there are people there that 
Because some people don't understand what it is to be planted in the house. They don't get it. They don't see it. This is why this word, I'm, I just I'm, feel so strongly about it. I pray that you get it. I pray that the Holy Spirit would bring revelation to you this morning. But people who, they may go to church, but they don't see the need for being planted. They don't see the need. And I go back now and they just, they hop from church to church to church to church to church to church. To church. And they've not grown. They are in the same place of 30 odd years ago. And my life's so different. My life is like wide open spaces. Why? Because I chose to plant myself in the house of God. You see, are you like a tree planted by the stream? Do you yield fruit? in season does your leaf not wither and does whatever you do prosper where are you planted you need to ask yourself ask yourself I've asked myself where am I really planted where are you planted are you in a pot or are you in a garden because they're both very 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 different a potted plant never grows to its full potential, never gets its full nutrients, stunts their growth, needs feeding constantly, needs pampering, needs looking after. Why? Because you're not rooted in the garden. When you're in the garden, it has a huge potential that never stops, gets all the goodness it needs to thrive. The aroma touches all who come in contact with it, flourishes because of its surroundings. You see, where have you placed your roots? Because what happens is, these, pot, these plants look amazing. Don't they look amazing? They're not real, they're false. But I'm talking about the plant. When you, can, you can come in church and you will see some pots because there are pots in churches until people understand. Because yeah. we're learning. Yeah. So this morning is like, take it as, okay, God, are you saying this to me? Don't take it as anything that's nasty. This is like, no, this is good. Yeah. This is good. Yeah. You may be a pot this morning, but God doesn't want you to be a pot. He wants you to put your roots down and get planted. But you see, what happens when you're in a pot is pots stand together and you know, they look lovely, don't they? They look so nice here and lovely. They, they're all connected, but they're not connected because their roots don't touch each other. So they can just do what they want when they want. They can just, you know, yeah, I, I, I love you today because you're nice to me today. And then something happens, and all of a sudden, you start pulling yourself away. Because roots don't keep you together anymore. There's no roots connection. So all of a sudden, maybe you're isolated right now. Maybe you feel isolated right now. I've got an answer for you. Get rooted. Get your roots down. Get your roots down. And there could be, you know, another plant will come in. They're full of leaves, they're very pretty, but this new plants come in and think, I am someone. Everybody wants to know me. I might be small, but I'm tall on the inside. <laughs> and it comes in and it looks, think, oh, there's plants over there. Maybe I'll go and join them. Hmm, they think they're big, they're not. Birds of a feather flock together. Be very careful who you align yourself with. Be very careful who you're walking with, who you're standing with, and who you're sitting with. Find out where are their roots. Find out where the roots are. You see, the wind can come and throw, there could be a tornado coming in here today and they would be thrown everywhere. 
because they wouldn't be stood sturdy. They wouldn't be able to stay together. They'd be all over the place. And then one day you may find yourself that you're on your own with no one there. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Triffid. With no one there around you and you're wondering and then you start to blame the church. But actually, it's you've isolated yourself because you're in a pot and you can't see the big picture. You can't see what's going on around you. We need to get planted. Where have you placed your roots? Roots are extremely important for our support network and our stability. You see, we feel a sense of belonging when we have deep roots. Deep roots. Then you start to feel, I belong. I belong you. Why? Because your roots go deep. Your roots go down. Are you a root person? Are you a leaf person? Or are you a branch person? You see, a leaf person is more interested in getting noticed. Because, you know, they look nice. They've got leaves and they're nice and they're pretty. And, but they're not interested in setting their roots down. Sometimes it's because, yeah, I might move soon. I might... I might not like you can be a pot you can be a pot and be in the church and think, oh, I don't want to be this is all right for now. I'll be in this part. I'll do this part. But then one day I think, oh no, I'm gonna be over here now. And I think, oh, I'll play, I'll be part of this team now. Oh no, I'm not. I'm gonna be a part of this team now. And you're moving around. Why? Because you're not connected. And you feel lonely. Because your roots aren't going down and you have no, uh, no purpose. Because you keep looking for purpose. You see, when your roots go down, you've got purpose. And it doesn't matter where you are placed in the kingdom of God, you've still got purpose. Why? Because you are serving him, not yourself. We are called to serve Jesus Christ and we are called to serve in the church of Jesus Christ. You see, a leaf person, when the wind comes, when the cold comes, autumn comes to our lives and winter comes to our lives and what happens with the leaf person? They fall. The leaf person's gone. You can't rely on a leaf person because they come and go with the wind and the rain. A branch person. Branch people may stay a little longer. They get, they, they, when, they get when the going gets tough, they can handle so much because they're a branch, but then all of a sudden the weight, when the weight gets too heavy, the branch breaks away. Who are we? A leaf, a branch, or a root? Who are we? Being rooted is being belonging. Is belonging, it's not being belonging. Being rooted is belonging. It's in the roots, not the branches, that the tree's greatest strength lies. Roots give substance and they give anchorage. The tree's beauty lies in its branches, but its strength lies in its roots. We look out the outs on the, on the surface and think, oh, that's amazing. Oh, they're so gifted. They're so gifted. Where are the roots? Got to check the roots before you check the leaf. Check the roots before you check the, the, what's going on on what you can see. You see, what happens is when you set your roots down, you're not seen. The plants come in. Look at them. They come in. What's going on around you? Oh, I love a bit of that. I love a bit of that. Yes, 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 yes. But then when you're rooted, you come in, you get saved. And when you're planted, you're growing down. Down, down. Your roots are going down. They're not only going down, down, but they're going across. And when they go across, they touch other roots. And now you're together. You're getting the nutrients from other things as well. You're all getting the nutrients together. And you're strong, but you're not seen. You're only hidden. Just hidden. You know why you're hidden? Because you need to grow. You need to learn. You need to be nurtured. You need to, to know about God. You need to learn the things of God. This is a new, when Gray and I first got saved, we were learning so much, but we were never seen. 
We didn't, we were just learning, hungry for God. God, where can I fit? You get attached, you get people coming around you, leaders coming around you, they help you grow. But you're not buffed up. You're just here. The best place ever. The best place ever. You know why? Because if you flourish too quickly, you'll be aborted. Premature birth in anything that God gives us, when you push your way through to come out, always ends in disaster. But when you sit and you wait on God, when you put your trust in God, when you don't knock doors down yourself, but you come in the quiet place and you say, God, you know my heart. You know, Father, we talk. I feel I'm called to this. I feel it, but I trust you. I trust you, God. And then you attach yourself to people that are rooted and you get the nutrients from their roots. Never attach yourself to a potted person because you won't get any nutrients at all. It's so, so important that we get this, guys. So important. Roots, trees have a root system that can access all the moisture that it needs. And they travel deep and they travel wide. It's not about only about being planted is about where you are planted. Some of you here, you, you, you're looking for a church. Maybe you're visiting and going around different churches just to visit to see where to plant. I just wanna help you where to plant. You need a house that believes the Bible from beginning to end. Not this part or that part but about the whole Bible from beginning to end. In this house, we believe the whole Bible. You need a church where the Holy Spirit is evident. Why? Because you need the water. You need the height to be hydrated. You need to have beautiful skin. You need to look and shine with, a, with the fullness of the Holy Spirit. You need to be planted in a church where the word is spoken because the word is the food. It's the nutrients. What you would get in this morning, it's not me. This is the word of God you would get in this morning. It's nutrients to your soul, nutrients to your spirit. It's feeding us, feeding us. Why? So we are one, that our roots are getting tangled with each other so we can stand strong. You need to be in a church where Jesus is central, not people, not people. We're not into raising up people and focusing on people. We are raising up Jesus Christ and it's what he declares. It's what he is saying, not what people say. And we, you need to be in a house that has got fruitfulness, got integrity, got honour. We need to honour each other. We need to honour our leaders. We need to speak right. Like you say, do not walk. Do not sit. Do not stand in the place where the enemy wants to take us. We need to take a hold of who we are in God. We need to stand firm on his word. And we need to, this is a house, which is what I love about this house. This is a house where there is unity with diversity. You see, you look across, I see so many different nationalities, so many different personalities, so many different giftings. And when you were rooted in the garden, together we build the house of God. No one person builds the house of God. It takes an army to raise the kingdom of heaven for the world to see in, in, in all, of, all of the universe. It takes an army of people. And I just want to just, just encourage us this morning. Just assess where you're at. It's good to assess every now and again. Gray and I do it in our marriage, where we, we, we have times of assessment. <laughs> it doesn't turn out like that, it's done normal. But it's like, I think we need to talk. You know when you're in, in, in those of you who've been married long enough, know that you, you know, you have to work at your marriage. 
It, it's not like a breeze. It don't fall in love and go, oh, you're all gooey all the time for the rest of your life. It don't work like that. You work at it. Because it's two people, two different personalities, two different needs, two different wants. You've got to work together. So we work together and sometimes we have to sit down and say, okay, when that happened, I, won, I just, that affected me or that did that. And then Gray would say, yeah, yeah, okay, I'm sorry, da, da, da. And then, but the same with me and I go, okay, I'm sorry. You're working together. That's what happens in family, guys. We've now got our kids telling us. Our kids are older, but you know what? We're all there for each other. We've all got each other's back, but we've put Jesus first. And when any of us are out of line, one of them will come in. Same as with me and Gray, now as a family. But I want to take this to legacy family. When we are planted in the house of God, we are there for each other, to champion each other, to guide each other. When we go out of line, because you will go out of line, all of us do, we, 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 we live in our flesh, we make mistakes. But you know, I want to be somewhere where I know someone up beside of me will come and say, you know, when you did that, I don't think that was the greatest idea. And we come alongside each other. You've got a team of leaders in this church that are phenomenal. I'm telling you, Legacy Church, we have been, Gray and I have been ministry now for 30 odd years. But we've been leading Legacy Church for 22 of those years. And the church today is in the best place it has ever ever been and you know what happens when that happens the enemy sees and little foxes come so be aware of the little foxes because God's doing something amazing God's doing something amazing I just want us just one minute to just to close your eyes one second I just want to just give an opportunity if you are in this place and you've never, ever given your life to Jesus, I just want to give you an opportunity right now to just do this, where you can give your life fully to God. He will transform your world. 37 years ago, I made this decision and my life has never been the same. It has gone from uh, glory to glory in that sense. It's been an amazing journey. And if that is you and you want to give your life to Jesus, all I want you to do is just raise your hand and I'll see it and I'll ask you to put it down. And then I want to pray with you. Is there anybody this morning who wants to give their life to Jesus? Thank you. You can put your hand down. Is there anybody else? Thank you. Is there anybody else? Okay, we're gonna pray with these two people. And if you all repeat after me, that'll be amazing. And especially the two people, just speak this out. It's your prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross to save me. Forgive me of all the wrong things in my past. Help me, Jesus, to give my life fully to you and to walk on the road that is with you and to sit with people who love you. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In your precious name, amen. I just want to pray for all of us as a church. I just want to pray that we all grasp a hold of this word and we assess our lives so that we can grow and be strong oaks for Jesus, that our roots will go deep, deep down into the soil, that we will connect with other roots in the church and we will grow and we'll be an army for the kingdom of heaven and that we will, not only us will flourish, but the people around us will flourish all because we've set our roots down in the soil. Father God, I just pray for every heart represented here today. I pray, God, and online, Jesus. I pray, Father, that, Lord, we understand what it is to be planted in your house, to set our roots down so that we can flourish, that we would be blessed, and whatever we do will prosper. Sometimes we have to wait, but God, as we trust you, God, you never fail us. You never, ever fail us. 
And we thank you, Father. We pray, God, that as this church moves forward, Lord, we'll be a beacon on the hill for your kingdom, for your glory. And Father, that people, thousands of people will find you, Father. In your precious name, Jesus, we ask. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Oh, where are we? We're there. Can you hear me? Amazing. Can we give it up for Pastor Dell one more time? Thank you so much for such an incredible, passionate, strong word for now getting attacked by a tree. But thank you so much for that this morning. Hey, one of the ways you can take that next step to getting planted, getting rooted, is by joining one of our incredible teams. We've got many amazing teams that help make this morning what it is or help provide an incredible opportunity for people to come in and meet with Jesus, which is all, what it's all about. So come on, get connected, join a team, and you can do so by heading out through those doors at the back, to the left, there's our connections team there, and they'll be, help, uh, be able to take you through and get you planted, take that next step. So please do that. And hey, for those that raised their hands this morning and made that incredible decision to follow Jesus, yeah, make some noise. The best decision you you could ever make. Yes, yeah, so good. We're standing with you and we want to get one of these amazing red bags to you which have got some resources in there that's going to help you on your next steps within your journey. An incredible journey. And those who are new, welcome again. It's good to see you all. Thank you for being with us this morning. Now, we would love to get you a free coffee or a tea or whatever tickle you fancy, whatever you're in for, up for, whatever you like to drink, we would love to get you on. But with that, we want to connect with you, chat with you, find out why you chose to be here with us this today, find out a little about, a bit about who you are, and you get to know us as well. So we would love to connect with you. You can do the same. Head through those doors into the Connections Lounge on your left, and we would love to connect with you. But we're all ready to praise out this morning. We've had a strong morning. We start strong strong all the way through. We want to finish strong praising together. Let's go. Have a good day.
church, what a day. Have a great rest of your Sunday. We'll see you next week, same time. Peace.